Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle. I thought I'd look at the price to earnings multiple or PE ratio and the classic theory as to what drives or determines the PE ratio. So in order to do that, I need several assumptions. I start up here in the upper left hand corner with the inputs into the capital asset pricing model. So these are all just assumptions. Risk free rate of 2% a market risk premium of 3%, sometimes called the equity risk premium. Now I have a hypothetical company here, so I need a measure of that company's systematic risk. And we're gonna assume there a beta of 1.5. That's a measure of the company's systematic exposure or a function of its correlation to the overall market. That allows me under the capital asset pricing model to compute the cost of equity denoted by small k. The cost of equity here per the cap M is going to be risk-free rate plus the product of beta, sometimes called the price of risk, and the market risk premium, sometimes called the quantity of risk. That tells me under cap M that the cost of equity is 6.5%. So I need a couple more company-specific assumptions. I'm going to assume in the current period the company has earnings of $10. That's earnings per share. And notice I'm denoting that EPS zero with the zero to indicate that it's current earnings per share. And then the company pays a dividend currently per share of $2. And similarly, I'm denoting that with DPS zero to show that it's the current dividend per share. So those are inputs, meaning I can infer the payout ratio of 20%. After all, the company paid $2 on $10 earned per share. My discount rate, notice the purple, it's borrowed from above. I've already computed it per the capital asset pricing model. But for our purposes, it's the cost of equity that we're using as the discount rate. And finally, a key assumption here is the growth rate. Growth in what? Well, I'm going to keep it simple and assume the payout ratio is constant. So my growth rate of 5% means that I'm expecting a growth in both EPS or earnings per share and dividends of 5%. And that's in an infinite series because I'm keeping it simple, not using something like a two or three stage model. So my, I'm finished with my input assumptions and now I can apply the theory to estimate what the price to earnings multiple ought to be. How do we do that? Well, just in a previous video last week, I showed the dividend discount model or Gordon growth model. And it really, it's the same model here. The price of the stock here is a function of the earnings. But after all, the earnings are not all paid out to the shareholders. So we take the earnings, multiply by the payout ratio, but we need to grow that forward because this is zero. We need to grow that forward to period one. So that so that's the one plus G growing the earnings that are paid out. In other words, the dividends per share forward to the next period one. So you see how these three simplify to the dividend per share next period. So it's not quite this number. It's the $2 grown to next period. And then per that dividend discount model or Gordon growth, the derivation I show, you can see on the website if you like, is the discount rate minus the growth assumption. Okay, so that's just the formula there. I'll pull that away and we come back here. Now I've got the earnings per share, but notice going forward to next period, that's simply the $10 growing at 6%. I'm sorry, growing at 5%. Now here's that numerator I need, dividend per share next period. So notice it's pretty straightforward. It's my $2 current dividend per share grown at 5%. My price then applies what we just looked at, that variant on the Gordon growth model. I'm taking the dividend per share next period that's the $2 and the 2.1 approximately, dividing by, notice here, discount rate minus the growth rate. And that gives me what this very simple model predicts to be the stock price of $140.
and then finally I can take that stock price computed by a model so I'm gonna call it the model price divided by current earnings per share so that's the PE multiple its share price divided by earnings per share and notice I've den denoted it here with PE zero to emphasize that it's the PE against my current earnings so in regard to PE ratios you want to be very careful about what kind of denominator or earnings base we're talking about not just in terms of the definition but in terms of which period because for example notice right here I take the same price 140 and instead divide it by the forward earnings that is to say earnings one period forward and so I have the same numerator but my denominator is now higher it's against that grown earnings base and in this case I have what we would call a forward PE that is to say price divided by the forward earnings per share of 13.33 which is less and would necessarily be less if the earnings per share is growing if you'd like to look at the spreadsheet which I'll put on the website you can see here something else I did which is broke this into broke the PE ratio into two pieces if you look at the graph here here in blue is my dividends per share constantly at two dollars so this is as if the dividends did not grow and then in green I've got the growth in dividends per share and what I've done did right here the PE due to continuing is I simply uh, under the assumption of dividends not growing I just capitalize those that is divided by the discount rate and then inferred the PE ratio if there were no growth in the dividends and that is 3.23 so that's right here and then the rest I attribute to growth in the dividends that's the green bar here so in other words the PE ratio of 14 or the PE multiple of 14 breaks into two components here the the smaller portion under these assumptions that I can attribute to just the in place or ongoing dividends and then in green the growth expectations you can see here my 14 multiple here really embeds a lot of expectation for growth okay so by doing all of this first we are not so mechanical as to expect this is going to tell us what the actual PE ratio is but the model really forces us to think about what are the important determinants of the PE ratio and so I've listed them here notice I have four fundamental determinants and this is a simple model meaning surely there are probably other fundamental factors that have been omitted okay that's fine I have a fifth factor here that's very very important but first in purple the interest rate is a determinant notice that's because it came into the cost of equity which informed our discount rate so for example if I raise the risk-free rate from 2% to 3% notice the PE multiple drops down to 8.4 because I just increased the cost of equity so we can see here dynamically the idea of higher interest rates correlating with lower PE multiples if I went the other direction though if interest rates dropped like they have been over the last regime down to 1% my PE multiple goes way up to 42 put again the interest the risk-free interest rate drops that's like the Treasury yield curve shifting down reducing my cost of equity reducing my discount rate and this model directly translates into PE expansions so I'll put that back to 2% secondly in purple I have the risk of the company also very important under this approach modeled through the beta so if I increase the risk of this company's earnings and dividends say let's put the beta up to 1.8 my P ratio again drops as well because my claim on these are claims to riskier future cash flows so the beta here informs what conceptually we're calling the risk in other words the riskier these future cash flows the less I want to pay today and the lower the PE multiple the payout ratio in orange influences so if the dividend if the company only paid out say 10 percent similarly my PE multiple shrinks I'll put that back and finally of course the growth assumption is very important 
if my 5% goes up to 6%, my PE ratio really goes up. So very sensitive to the growth expectation. And finally, what we've just looked at are what I've called fundamental factors because we can see they're all directly in the model. The final fifth factor is very important. It's the technical factors that I like to view as, by definition, they are not included in our model. So notice, there's no supply and demand or liquidity, for example, implicitly in the model. So the PE rate multiple, of course, is influenced by technical factors that do not show up in our model. And so that'll help to explain why there will be some differences. There'll be roughly, on a first approximation, two kinds of differences. Fundamental factors we have omitted. That's assuming we've got the correct model specified. And then all of the technical factors that are not even in the model. This is David Harper, The Bonic Turtle. Thanks for your time.